another important thing. These crystalline solids they have sharp melting points. They melt only at a particular temperature. Just before that they are always a solids and after that temperature they are completely liquids. So they have a definite melting points which are also are their characteristic feature intrinsic properties and we can even identify a solid on the basis of its melting point. Another important thing, they have sharp edges and smooth planes. This is because they have a regular arrangement of the particles which gives them what? Smooth planes and sharp edges. So they always whenever you break a crystalline solid you will get sharp edges and smooth planes. They have high and sharp melting points of course because of strong interparticle forces but the sharp melting point is due to the, the presence of only one type of interparticle forces. Then since these solids are having strong interparticle forces they are also called and they have a exact or a sharp melting point they are also called true solids whereas the, we call amorphous solids as pseudo solids. So they are called true solids because they are exactly solids before their melting points and they remains in that solid state. Then they show an isotropism or they are an isotropic solids. What is an isotropism is? It's a tendency of a solid to show the same property with different magnitudes from the different sides of the same crystal. See you can see there the arrangement of these particles will be will not be same diagonally lengthwise and breadthwise. It will be different. So what we find is that's why the same property like electrical resistance, refractive index of these solids will have different magnitudes from the different directions of the same crystal. This property is called anisotropism. So these are the major properties of a crystalline solid. Now let us take amorphous solids. Let us see now the amorphous solids. Amorphous solids are the solids in which the constituting particles are randomly packed or arranged. So the constituting particles are randomly arranged. They are just packed as such without anything and without any fixed pattern. So they are like this. That is why they are also called short range solids because in these solids whatever the pattern is there which can the constituting particles can form can last for a very short distance and, it's, is, and is not repeated for long distances. So these solids are called short range solids. Now they They melt over, they melts over a range of out of temperature. They does not have a sharp melting point. They melt over a range of temperature. If they start melting from 60 degrees Celsius, they will continue to do so until 90 or 95 and then after that they are, they are actually in the liquid state. So from 60 to 95 they are in the semi fluid state. That is why we call these solids as pseudo solids. Pseudo solids are the solids which are also called false solids because most of the amorphous solids even in the lick in the at the room temperature are having some of their forces already broken and some of the forces are still intact that's why they're in the semi fluid or in the pseudo solid state that's why they are called pseudo solids not true solids so this is another important property of amorphous solids then they don't have
sharp edges and smooth planes. They always have rough planes because the particle arrangement is not regular. So they always get rough planes. Then the next point, next point of difference is that they show isotropism. That's the opposite of anisotropism. That means these solids shows the same property with same magnitude from the any of the directions of the, of the crystal or of the solid. So because the arrangement will be random from all the sides, the property is shown with the same magnitude from, the, from any of the direction of the solid. So that's why they show isotropism and not anisotropism. So these are the general properties of amorphous solids. Don't think that these are not important for us. Amorphous solids again are very important. Your normal glass, rubber, plastics, all are the examples of amorphous solids. Amorphous silicon is very well used in making photovoltaic cells. So they also have very lot of different uses. But yes, of course, we always have been fascinated about the crystalline solids. How and what all are the patterns in which they are arranged? What all are the different properties they can show? We always have been fascinated about this and we always have been trying to study them. So we will have more of the crystalline solids in our slavers. So let us go into the details of the type of crystalline solids.